Hi guys, uh, welcome to here. Coming out 2.0, because I hated my first coming out story. I don't want anyone to watch it. I'm making a new one. I'm gay. Welcome to my gay life. This is it. Oh, what's up, this snack? Done my banana. Anyways, hi. Happy Friday, folks. <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know, my name's Allie. Um, I did my coming out story like almost two years ago and I came across it the other day and I could not watch it. It was so bad. The audio is bad. The video is bad. I'm super awkward and it's not open at all. So I wanted to redo it because I feel like I've really expanded since then and I feel like I, um, I have more to say. Excuse my cold voice here. Hopefully this will be a little bit better. Not as boring. Oh my gosh. Thanks to whoever watched that. So boring. I was like not funny at all. Jeez. What the heck happened to me? Where should I start? Oh goodness. Let's start from the beginning. So I had a best friend when I was really little, like four or five. And uh, I really loved her. Like I loved her. What the? Okay. The neighbors have this noise on all the time. It's like me, me, me. It sounds like those metal gong or like a shrill dolphin. I remember, dist I distinctly remember um, asking my mom once if I could marry her. Cause I was like, I don't want to marry a boy. I want to marry my best friend. And like, oh, how fun. We could both, like we'll both wear dresses and it would be so much prettier. So that was like the first inkling now looking back. Obviously at that time, I had no idea that that could mean that I liked girls. I was like five. But then when I was in elementary school, everyone started having crushes on boys and probably in like grade five and six. And I didn't. And like, I just wanted to hang out with all the girls. And there was another best friend <laughs> who maybe I loved. Uh, the trend going is there. <laughs> um, so I just like wanted to be around her all the time and I look back and I, I know that that's what a crush was. And I knew that, I just thought that that's how you felt about your friends. And I didn't like any of the boys, so I made up all these crushes just so that I could fit in with the girls. Um, and then in grade eight, I did like a boy for like the entire year and I have it very detailed written in my journal. And, and I did, so then I was like, oh good, okay. I just took a long time. You know, I just took longer than most people to actually have crushes on people. And then I kind of like, I never really thought about it at that time, but I, I, I was never really exposed to anyone who was gay. So I didn't really know it was an option. In high school, I remember feeling really like interested by gay people, about gay people, but also like, I didn't know how to express that. If anyone knows me, I'm really bad at expressing my feelings. <laughs> I would like, just like put them, put gay people down. So I remember that my sister had a friend who was a lesbian and I was like, ew, she kisses girls? Like, and I took part in not bullying, but like talking about the one gay, openly gay person in our school. And I feel so bad about that. Like that was not good of me on any level, but I think it was my, me trying to push away like the realization that, hey, I think that I might actually like girls. So yeah, like all in high school, I was very like, ew, gay people, like that's so gross. Um, but internally, I think that was like my cry for somebody to stand up and be like, no, this isn't gross. Like I was, I think, fishing for someone to justify that it was okay. And I mean, that's probably, that's not the right way to express it, but unfortunately that's how I expressed it. And I also remember in grade nine, I definitely, definitely had a crush on this girl in grade 12. I thought she was the coolest girl ever. And she looked like Vanessa Hudgens. I love Vanessa Hudgens. And I would like, <laughs> this is weird. I knew where her locker was and I would like walk by and like try and catch her eye and smile at her. Smooth move, Valley, smooth move. Uh, so, but then I genuinely did have crushes on, on boys in high school. So again, that justified me pushing away, like 
the fact that I may like girls. So it was quite normal and then I went to university and I really liked boys and I went on lots of dates and you know I I always went on dates with like the super muscular very manly men like very typical like beautiful men well I thought they were anyway um but like it would be like three dates and then or we would date for like three weeks or like a month and then that was it and there was always something like I was always very held back and I think that's what they were like you I think you can tell when somebody's not fully themselves and you can tell when somebody's not comfortable and I was just never comfortable I could never relax around them you know like it was typical like oh I'm gonna go on a tinder date tonight a one night tinder date and then that was it and I was a serial dater and that that continued for <laughs> several years and I didn't really see a problem with it. Like, I just thought, oh, you know, um, eventually I'm going to find someone who I like and enjoy. And I think it was a combination of me not being comfortable with myself and not being comfortable around other people fully. And I hadn't really had many guy friends, so I think there was a combination of, like, weirdness, weird vibes coming out of me. And people were like, no, this is not good. And also I'd never been in a serious relationship, so I think, you know, that in itself really takes, like, it's a learning experience being in a, a serious relationship, and I'd never been in one. So anyways, in 2013 um, was the first time that I actually realized that I liked a girl, and she was a friend, uh, well, medium friend, like, I knew her through a friend, and that I realized that I liked her, um, but like pushed it away for quite some time. And then like around the exact same time, my friend who I had lived with before and like um, had known for a few years, we were very, like, very good friends, um, asked me like one time, like, are you okay living with, cause I was living with a girl who, a lesbian, and who was like dating this other girl. None of this matters. Um, she was like, are you okay living with lesbians? We were out at, at the bar one night. She's like, is that, is, like, is that gross? Is it weird? And I got so defensive. I was like, no, the, the coolest girls I've ever met. And then she came out to me and I was like, oh my gosh. She was just testing to see like, am I going to be against this? Or like pretty much my cry, like what my cry for help was in high school. And I was, I was like weirdly thrilled that like, I was like, this is the best day ever. Like so excited when she came out to me because I'd never had someone close to me say, this is okay. Or like, hey, I'm going to be brave enough, you know, to say how I really feel. So like over the course of that year, kind of like going through that process with her and seeing how like she became such a new an improved human being like so much more confident and so much more open and like just I can't even explain the growth that I saw in her and like that totally inspired me to look within myself and be like okay and admit to her that I liked this other girl I was like I think I love her and, <laughs> and, and then I got through it and like I had that support and if it wasn't for her I never would have come out. I never would have had the courage to, you know, be myself and grow. And so in December of 2013, I was like going on the walk with my cousin and I said, I think I like your girl. And that was the first time like I told anybody else. And from there, I was like switched my Tinder to girls and I went on a date and I felt the first time in my life like connected on the date and like really happy and yeah I mean it was it was yeah so good so anyways fast forward a few months I was like okay I'm going on all these girl dates I think I should probably tell people uh, I had told like a few really close friends but like I didn't want to tell my family before I, and like scare them not scare them but like pretty much scare them <laughs> I didn't want to tell them before I was sure so then actually I met Sam and that's when I was like okay I think it's time to tell people. So I called my mom, no, I called my dad, I called my sister, and I told her, and then I told all my family over the phone. 
and they were all like, very positive reactions and um, all my friends had really positive reactions but yeah I was very lucky in that aspect where everyone was really supportive of me if anything coming out really helped me grow as a person and gave me so much more confidence because I don't know you learn to stand up and be like this is me if you love me for who I am you'll stay you'll stick around and you'll support me and you'll help me grow through this and anyone who wasn't like that I mean I just didn't have time for that so yeah coming out really gave me the confidence and the the ability to really look within myself and I think get more in tune with what I'm feeling. Just getting that out and not holding it in was immensely like therapeutic because like before that, before I told anyone, I would watch like Google how to tell if you're gay, lesbian, are I a lesbian quiz? <laughs> like, and I would cry and I'd be like up for hours in the night. Like I barely slept. I was beside myself and I tried so many times to tell somebody. Um, and I couldn't. I just couldn't because I didn't want to tell my like my best friend who would come out to me. Because I was like, well what if like she just thinks I'm, you know, like trying to fit in with her. Or like, you know, what if she thinks I love her. Like I was terrified of that. So like that's why I didn't tell anybody for so long. Because I'm like, they're just going to assume like. All my friends are gonna assume like what about all those sleepovers we had or like you know I didn't want them to think that I I didn't want people to think I loved them but like every straight girl doesn't love every guy and you know like all their friends so it's just like these little fears that you have while you're coming out but yeah then I had like all those positive reactions and I felt like inspired and then I felt like I didn't have to change because when I think the one of the hardest things was that um, growing up, like, the only gay and lesbian people I knew were very stereotypical, like, and the only things I saw in the media were really stereotypical, but I was like, I don't fit that, you know, like, I don't fit into any of these stereotypes, I'm, like, very much myself, and I don't want to have to change to find a, a girl friend, you know, like, I was like, no one's going to be attracted to me, if that, that's, like, a typical, stereotypical image of a lesbian, you know, but... Then I realized that there were tons of people just like me and there is no look of a lesbian. Like you cannot tell who is gay and who is not by looking at them because there is no look. Like it's a style that you have and you can be straight or gay and have the same style, you know? So once I realized I didn't have to change because I didn't fit in the stereotype, that was really eye-opening too. And once I realized that I didn't have to box myself in, like, I didn't have to say, okay, just because I like this one girl or I'm choosing to be in a relationship with this one girl doesn't mean I can never, ever like a guy again. Um, that was a big thing, too, because I was like, I genuinely did like like certain people. Like, I did like certain guys, I mean, and I would say, like, it's a, it's a spectrum, you know? Like, I'm probably, like, 65, 35 kind of thing. Um, like... I feel like that's where I fall and and though that I'm like in a relationship right now with a girl I mean well, hopefully forever but like if that were to change who knows like I may end up with with a man I'm not in a box and that was something that once I realized like so many things opened up for me and like I just realized that I am who I am I love whoever I love based on their personality based on their interests and their kindness and their, you know, their ambition and not on their look or their gender. Yeah, anyway, so that was 2013. Now it's five years later and here I am. And I'm like super proud of who I am and I'm not shy anymore. Like for the first couple of years, probably until last year, whenever I met anyone new, I would say like Sam was my roommate or Sam was my friend. Um, because you're never really done coming out. Like, every new person I meet, I'm like, I have to, like, tell them. And, I mean, it's, ne luckily now, people are not like, what? Oh my gosh. They're just like, oh. Like, they don't question it, they don't say anything. I'm just like, I have a girlfriend. Or, like, if it comes up, if it doesn't, it doesn't. But I used to say, like, this is my friend, and then it's this awkward time where, like, then I am, a year later, now I am comfortable. Like, I used to, I introduced Sam as my friend for 
months and now I'm just like, uh, now, like how, where's that line? How do I now tell them, mm, by the way, we've been dating for years. Like, <laughs> so I wish that I would have had the confidence before to tell people right off the bat, like, oh, this is my girlfriend. Um, and that's something that took me a really long time, but I don't know what I'm saying. Don't know, don't know, don't know. So my advice to you folks, don't be afraid. Don't be hard on yourself because there's thousands and millions, a lot of other people who are feeling the same way as you. You know, own who you are. We are always here to listen. If you wanna to write to us and be like, just jot your thoughts down. Like that's something that I found really helpful for me is was journaling coming out. Yeah, and so yeah, we're always here. Like please, please reach out and please write to us, um, like email us. Um, we will always respond. Uh, that's my favorite thing about sharing our life with you guys and you know, like on Instagram and it's like there are days when I'm like, oh, should, like, should we be doing this? It's such a public thing. But then those days I get an email or I get a message from you guys, um, one of you about you know, how we inspired you to come out or how you're, you need advice on how to tell your parents you're gay or, you know, I wish that I would have had somebody that I could just, you know, tell something to without actually knowing them. You know what I mean? Like, we're always happy to read your, your thoughts and we'll always respond. It may take us a while, but um, just know that we're always here. You're not alone. So I, I feel like this was more of a ramble. I have like a weird pep talk than coming out 2.0, but please send me any questions that you have. If there's any more questions, like I feel like I missed a lot, big chunks of my coming out story. Um, and hopefully Sam will do her coming out story too, because I really want to see it. And um, I know a lot of people have been asking. So sorry, you didn't get Sam's, you got a second one of mine. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this. I feel like it was way worse than my last one. Um, but. Thank you for watching. Happy Friday. Subscribe for tons more videos. We're like super motivated now, so we're on our Tuesday, Friday schedule for real. Happy Friday. Happy coming out. Happy living your best gay life. And we will see you guys very soon. Next time with Sam. Bye. I'm gonna make a gay rap. I'm gonna make a gay rap. Yo. <laughs> I'm gonna make a gay Oh, I cannot rap today. <laughs>